like many people in the DBC community, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars fans and collectors, this is the Not So Vintage Nerd. I have returned, and for a very special occasion, this is DVC 307, Count Dooku or Darth Tyrannus. First reveal in Attack of the Clone, eventually uh, met his demise in Revenge of the Sith, expanded upon in many novels, and of course the Clone Wars series and Tales of the Jedi. Dooku is pretty much one of the favorite villains in Star Wars history for a lot of people. And in the Vintage Collection, much so in the Black Series as well, this is a figure that people have been waiting for a long time. A long time. And we got it, finally. So it's been a while. Uh, for those other, for those who don't know, Count Dooku actually won a fan-led voting uh, for his eventual making, um, which was uh, the March Madness led by the SWTVC, and he was the champion last year, uh, 2023. That was kind of a big deal. Eventually, got made uh, into from the pipeline into an actual product. And finally, after many months, if not years, for a lot of people in the community, he's a reality. He's a real boy. So the Black Series got it in 2019, if I recall. Uh, there will be a picture. It's considered by many to be one of the better Black Series figures, including better than import figures, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Because Hasbro can be really good or really bad. So it's kind of a so-so situation. But in the case of Dooku, that's that's a big deal, of course, because, well, if you see the card back, it's pretty much the character, not only from the film, but is a character played by Sir Christopher Lee, who passed away in 2015, if I recall. So it's been quite a while, and finally, in TVC form, he has a figure that actually resembles his uh, on-screen appearance. Which is um, wonderful. I actually discovered uh, Sir, Sir Christopher Lee in uh, Attack of the Clone when I saw it in theaters. But eventually it got to respect the gentleman in The Lord of the Rings. Because of his role as Saruman the White. So this is the card pack for uh, the Attack of the Clones Count Dooku. I don't think they're going to make the Revenge of the Sith. I don't see any point. Um, you can remove the head. You can remove the, the, the hands. No problem if you have the... Uh, Anakin Skywalker figure. So once a Jedi trained by Yoda, Count Dooku became disillusioned with the Jedi Order in thirst for greater power, ultimately leaving the light side behind and becoming Darth Sidious' disciple, Darth Tyrannus. So this is the Sith Lord, um, pretty much part of the. I think it's the third. Yeah, it's the third Sith Lord in 2.0. That we got full new tool, full new tool. The of course the first one was uh, Darth Vader, uh, the Dark Times. I think the the no the Rogue one was not all new, and of course we got uh, Dark Revan uh, uh, late last year. So Dooku is a big deal. Not only the character that is the most wanted in TBC history at this point, and eventually uh, of course uh, Dark Revan following. Uh, Following that, I will say. Uh, but yeah, where's the Sarge Ventress now? <laughs> That's the big question. So first of all, let's talk about quality control. The dreaded enemy of Hasbro these days. <clears throat> so, the belt. Uh, some of the samples, it's going to be varied in terms of quality. Uh, this is the, the cleanest one that I have. It's not too bad at first glance, but you will see uh, that some of the limits have been breached. Let's just say that. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, this one isn't too bad either. Uh, but this is a floaty piece, by the way. This is a floaty piece. By the way, you can see a bit of a line here. That's kind of strange. But what is even stranger is the fact that one of the samples had a bit of a scratch on the forehead. You can see it right there. Yeah. Not great. That's the first time I see that on a uh, TVC figure. Um... It's kind of a bummer, especially for the forehead. If it was on the back, that would be fine because you know you can cover it up with the uh, with the cape. But regarding that, it's not great. That's gonna be on my overall display with uh, a bunch of character from afar. Uh, but the fact that it happens, 
means that for those who want to display main characters, it's not not great, not great at all. So yeah, quality control. Be careful with that. Um, I think I do believe that it's always something important. Uh, of course, the cape can vary from unit from unit. Um, and I did on I do know I said from unit from unit. I do apologize for that, you know. And uh, yeah, this is the the figure itself. But now let's take a look at the figure itself, what it contains, and of course, we're gonna go about the scaling and of course uh, the articulation itself. And there he is out of the packaging, and um, as you can see after the the quality controls, uh, this is the full package right there. What you get here, which is going to be of course the unlit lightsaber hilt always good to have something like that which is a curved lightsaber hilt by the way for those who don't know um he's a fencer uh christopher lee used to be uh doing uh used to do uh fencing swordman's ship and this is pretty much a representation of what could have worked for him so and of course they uh they translated that for the rest of the dooku character and it's great so that's great. So uh, and even uh, the red button as well for the uh, for the activation. So we get of course the uh, the full lightsaber looks phenomenal. I will say that even the golden is painted, which is uh, crazy. Um, I'm sorry if the camera doesn't pick it up. So um, let me. There we go. There's a bit of golden as well. Even the black series at that detail. So they are not skipping on that. It's great. It's absolutely great. Like I said, the button is great. And we get, surprise, surprise, Force Lightning. A full hand, a much cleaner hand, of course, than the, uh, compared to the Emperor, which is the only character with this kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's my first time seeing that, and it's great. Um, Of course, they chose that image for Dooku with the Force Lightning, so they had to include that piece. Otherwise, that would have been so silly. You know, showing accessories that could have happened, but not showing it inside the bubble. Master Skywalker for the Force Awakened, or The Last Jedi, without the hilt for the lightsaber. That was kind of stupid. <laughs> oh boy, that was a bad time for TVC. Bad, bad time. But yeah, this is Dooku. And of course, I think it's going to be important that we take a look at the scaling. My apologies if the camera is going to struggle in um, focusing, but I think you can see the difference in scaling. Uh, Dooku is way over Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the Showdown slash Jabim version from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And that's on the left of the figure, which is on our right. And on the other side, we have the Death Star 2 Vader from Return of the Jedi. And I think it's appropriate uh, in terms of scaling. Now, Christopher Lee was very tall. A very tall gentleman. And, um, of course, Ewan McGregor was much, much, uh, much smaller by comparison. And I would say that I think Aiden Christensen was almost as tall as Christopher Lee, but just slightly below. Uh, but yeah, uh, Christopher Lee was kind of a giant man by comparison. And of course, uh, Vader is uh, Vader in the armor. I mean, Dave Prowse was also a, a tall man. So yeah, I think it's uh, appropriate for the character. And uh, yeah, uh, very good job on the scaling, I would say. It's appropriate. So there he is, Count Dooku, Darth Tyrannus, Christopher Lee. I do believe that the portrait gives uh, gives him justice just a little bit it's not perfect that is for sure i mean uh, i would have preferred a bit of a white instead but it, it is what it is uh, but depending on the profile i will say wow <laughs> there are some angles that really really captures the uh, the portrait of the uh, of the actor exceptionally well i mean if they were to make uh, the lord of rings figures at this scale, with this kind of perfection, it is uh, remarkable. Considering that Count Dooku um, was a famed villain, uh, and if we get the uh, the chance to have a uh, at this scale a uh, Saruman figure, that would actually be awesome. But yeah, I do believe that they made a fantastic job at the end for for the scaling of the figure. Now the cape has a um, kind of a piece really that keeps it uh, together. It's not metal. Um, 
and it's not plastic it's like a part of the uh, softer material that is used for the cape which is uh, you can pull it out no problem with that uh, it doesn't limit the articulation like it does on the director Krennic so that's kinda great uh, the articulation for the head I will say that uh, not the best I would say doesn't really look down or up unfortunately it's really limited uh, but turning the head no problem um, so yeah I think the, the, the double barbell that you use is not the best I don't think I need uh, Count Dooku to pivot the head in every single direction uh, but it is what it is not the best uh, neck articulation I will say that uh, for the shoulders however uh, this is a different story it's pretty good actually it's pretty good a bit of a bit of a meat as well on the uh, on the uh, underarm that's pretty good the, or the armpit I should say so yeah uh, elbow articulation um, I'm gonna show you that right there so you can actually make a full pivot no problem uh, so it's on a it's kind of, kind of a, a swivel no problem with that it makes the full 360 that's for sure for the elbow no problem with that for the uh, for the elbow I mean the shoulder and of course the, uh, the the elbow a little past 90 just a little bit past 90 on a swivel as well um, not not the best but not the worst uh, and of course the uh, the hand has a, a vertical inch um, difficult to access it uh, because of the uh, because of the sculpted uh, the sculpted clothes so it is what it is I'm gonna show you the up the other arm as well I'm not gonna skip uh, onto the articulation. So yeah, same uh, same deal for the um, for the swivel. So no problem with that. Uh, double vertical. So for the ends for the ends, no problem with that. So yeah, you can actually uh, do something with that. That's great. So yeah, uh, double vertical hinges for the uh, for the wrist. That's great. Uh, when I say double, it's because each hand has the articulation like this. So it's not like the Black Series version, which I will say, <laughs> I wish I had it. I really wish, because well, I I love the the roles that uh, Christopher Lee played. So torso articulation, it does have the swivel, that's for sure. Uh, the for the for going back and forth, not the best I will say. So yeah, a bit limited as well uh, because of the uh, tunic, but I'm sure you can actually. Uh, lower it down just a little bit and give him more articulation yeah because it's its own separate piece so that's fine not the best not the worst uh, of course the now standard barbell hips which is great and of course the uh, the cut at the upper thigh that's great right there uh, does he do a full-on split that is the question does he do a full-on split he can is it necessary though? <laughs> no, it's not necessary for this character. Now for the knee bent, bit of difficulty right there, but it is what it is. New figures, always does that. So yeah, a little past, uh, not really past 90, uh, pretty much just a little under 90. Uh, but you have the swivel again, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, not exceptional for the for the knee bend. Does he need that? I don't think so. If he can still, he can probably sit. <laughs> I know, no pun intended, but he can sit. That is for sure. He can uh, he can uh, sit pretty well. So, let's talk about the the ankle. Of course, because it's gonna make some elegant posing. So. All the way back, no problem with that. Does he go all the way forward? Eh, kinda, but not exceptional. I've seen better, but it is what it is. And for the rocker ankles, which is the ankle pivot, uh, not the best, I would say, not the best integration of it, but it does the job. It's decent. So, yeah. All in all, I will say, I. Uh, Maybe it could have been even better, that is for sure. Uh, but he has the articulation that he needs uh, for the overall aesthetics and posing. That's all he needs. But of course, it comes down to the overall posing. 
and what you can accomplish with it. Never mind the fact that the love for the prequel trilogy has really slowed our mind, this is a signature figure of superiority. And there he is, a VC-307 Count Dooku, or Dark Tyrannus. A special shout out to Only One Kenobi, Only One, <laughs> who made a lot of video uh, regarding the character of uh, Count Dooku uh, before the uh, reveal in the pipeline, and of course the events will reveal as a full product. I'm just happy that this is a reality. Um, I want to call out Hasbro for the uh, quality control overall uh, regarding the belt, regarding the, the forehead of one of the samples that I really got. Not great, not great at all. Uh, I do believe that this must be checked um, uh, from now on even closer because we know that the company is not doing well at all. I don't want to say that it's it should be a thing that worthy of celebration. No, nobody deserves to lose their job because of someone at the top. Uh, screwing up all the time, but yeah, it needs to be called out, it needs to be checked in, it needs to be said. Uh, it's not great. I don't want to see bad product on shelves, that is for sure. And I don't believe that this Count Dooku is a bad product. I do believe that this is one of the better DVC figures that we've got uh, ever uh, in terms of accessories, in terms of uh, the um, articulations, in terms of the likeness, in terms of the packaging, the whole presentation of the. Uh, of the character in its bubble, it's great. It's, uh, in my opinion, close to what I want to see in the vintage collection at this point as a new collector. This is, this would have been one of those figures that if I saw it on the shelf for the first time ever, and I was a new collector, I would say, yeah, I, I, I want, I want this on my shelf. That's absolutely great. And uh, just getting the fourth lightning hand, so basically you get get the the same image on the card back, that's great. The extra hilt, that's great. On par with the Black Series, and I will say that. Where is the archive version of Count Dooku? I don't know, but I think it's time because it was, before the pandemic, one of the better releases in the line, and it's nowhere near accessible at this point. So yeah, um, this is Count Dooku, VC-307, Possible candidate for figure of the year already in the TBC? No idea. But this was a not so vintage nerd signing out and may the force be with you. And long live the Sith.